Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Kelvin here. Did you know that Singapore is the most expensive country in the world to own a car? If you didn't know, now you know. But even so, it still has not stopped people from owning cars. Because there's cars, cars everywhere. Currently, there's about 1 in 10 people who own a car in Singapore. Different people will have different reasons for owning a car. Maybe it's because you want the convenience. Or you want to save time. Or you just want to show off to your girlfriend. Whatever it is, it's important to spend within your means. So in this video, we will look at how much you should be earning so that you can own a car comfortably. By comfortably, I mean you don't have to eat air, drink rainwater every month or be forced to work until 99 years old just to pay for your car, which would be bad. But before I start, I would greatly appreciate it if you can help to tap the like button and subscribe if you haven't done so. In return, I'll show you a standing cat. Alright, let's start right now. Okay, let's first find out how much does a car cost in Singapore. Spoiler alert, it costs CB a lot. For this example, I'll just use the SG Karma Best Sedan of the Year, Toyota Corolla Altis. This car will comfortably seat 5 people in it, or 20 people if you are brave enough. And like many modern cars, it has a hybrid engine which uses both gasoline and electric to power your car. If you check SG Carmart, the open market value of this car is $19,431, which is not too bad, right? But this is just the beginning because there's $220 registration fee, $19,431 additional registration fee, 7% GST, VES surcharge, and of course, the famous 80K Certificate of Entitlement which entitles you to own a car for 10 years and gives some people the sense of entitlement. When you add up everything, the total cost comes up to be $138,888. Voila! But of course, you won't be paying everything up front unless you are a rich boy. So you will need to take a car loan. For car loans, it's 30% down payment and 70% loan. According to SG Carmart, with a 7 years 2.78% interest loan, you would be paying $116,141 in total. Then, when you add back the 30% down payment, the total initial cost for owning a car would be $157,807. For simplicity's sake, I will divide it by 10 years and say that each month, the initial cost of owning a car would be $1,315. Then, after buying the car, you'll be driving it all around Singapore, right? So let's include in all the other additional costs. First up, petrol. In 2018, LTA estimated that on average, cars have an annual mileage of 17,500 km a year. The fuel consumption of the Toyota car is 15.4 km per liter. Currently, the cheapest Ron 95 petrol is $2.84. So using simple math, every month, you will have to pay $269 for petrol. Second, parking. Parking fee will be different depending on when and where you park. For example, for HDB season parking, you will pay between $80 to $110 every month. Or if you park at Sentosa, you will be paying $1.20 every hour. So for this, I will just assume that the total parking fee is about $110 every month. Third, ERP. The cost of ERP ranges from $0.50 cents to $3 per trip. Now, I know some people like to wait for ERP to turn off before going through it. But for simplicity's sake, let's assume that ERP costs $30 every month. As for car insurance, I will just use the rate from Etika, which is $1,728 per year. Road tax costs $742 per year. And finally, there's car maintenance. According to the Toyota's website, the maintenance fee is $368 per session and they recommend going for servicing every 6 months. So when you add up all these costs like upfront costs, interest payment, petrol, parking, maintenance, ERP, everything, the cost of the car comes up to around $1,991 every month, which is a lot of money. Let me share a quick message from this video's sponsor, Weibo. This month, Weibo has further improved their sign-up bonus to $130 of free Tesla shares. To qualify, you just need to deposit at least 2,000 SGD into Weibo 
make one buy trade on either US stocks or US ETFs within 30 days, make another buy trade on US options within the same 30 days, then maintain the 2000 HD balance for 30 days, and you will receive your free $130 Tesla shares. So if you are interested, you can sign up with my link down below. With that being said, let's get back to the video. So now that we know the total cost, let's find out how much we should be earning so that we are able to afford the car. There are many different ways to calculate this. The first way is recommended by Sidley, where you use the 50, 30, 20 rule. 50% of your income to expenses, 30% to investments, then save the remaining 20%. This is to make sure that you don't spend too much money on the car, which will be bad. Instead, you are making sure that you are saving and investing your money for future use. Expenses will vary from person to person. But according to Money Smart, if you are living a cheapskate lifestyle, your money expenses will be around $1,002. So when you add in the $1,991 cost of owning a car, money expenses will go up to $3,191. If you work backwards, 50% of that as expenses means that the take-home pay will be $6,380, which means that you will need to be earning at least $7,580 to be able to afford a car. Now, we can totally stop here and call it a day. But this amount doesn't take into account a lot of things. Like maybe you want to start a business, or you want to buy a house, or you want to or accidentally have kids. Then, in this case, this $7,580 is definitely not enough at all. So, let's use a better rule. The one-tenth rule by the financial samurai. He says that you should spend no more than one-tenth of your annual income on the purchase price of a car. This rule will help you spend responsibly, reduce your car ownership stress, and most importantly, boost your net worth over time. But you know I know that it's impossible to follow this rule in Singapore because the cost of owning a car is over $100,000, meaning you will need to earn over $1 million a year just to be able to afford a car. Well, unless you are DBS CEO, Gupta san then it's possible. So this rule can be modified to no more than 10% of your salary. If the money cost is $1,991, then you will need to be earning $19,910 to be able to afford the car. So yeah, it's either your friend is earning a ton of money or he is spending all his money on his car. So those are the two rules that you can follow. But for me, I will cast as a tool to save time. Yes, yes, I know some people will cast as a tool to show off. But that's not the point. The point is, the main reason we will take Grab instead of a public transport is so that we will get to somewhere faster. So let's use another way to calculate how much you should be earning such that it will make sense to buy a car. It was found that on average, Singaporeans spend around 40 to 45 minutes every day traveling to work. So let's say if I travel from Tampines to Queenstown to work every day, that's 42 minutes traveling time. But if I travel by car, the traveling time reduces to 26 minutes. Basically, I save 16 minutes per trip. So assuming I travel from Tampines to Queenstown every day, I will have saved 960 minutes or 16 hours of my time every month. Remember that the money cost of a car is $1,991. That means I paid $1,991 to buy 16 hours of my time. For many of us who have a fixed salary every month, it would be hard to earn the extra $1,991 in just 16 hours. But for people who are paid based on commissions, like property agents, insurance agents, salesperson, this is totally possible because to them, time is money. That's why you see many of them owning cars because to them, a car is a tool to buy time so that they can earn more money. So there you have it. Those are the three rules that tell you when you should buy a car in Singapore. Of course, there are many other good reasons why it's necessary to get a car. And it doesn't have to be financial reasons. Like maybe you need to send two kids to school every day or bring your parents around or you just like the comfort of traveling in a car. Those are definitely good reasons to get a car. All in all, just make sure that while you are paying for a car, don't forget to save and invest for your future. Anyway, that's all for today. But do you own a car? Do comment down below and let me know. Like, share and subscribe as I'll be posting new videos every Monday, Wednesday and Friday.